Of the director of football journeyman on fm21 with me foggy place it's the end of season review with wigan as you will have seen in the last episode we have successfully survived in league one get in whoop, whoop. um and we're just gonna have a quick look to see what we're what how our season went and then in the second part of this episode we're gonna have a look and see what our director of football is going to get up to so Start off the season, end of season review. Um, not a huge amount of transfers. According to this, it was a busy season in the transfer market. Wasn't really. Uh, Clemens got an A+. Plus. Delighted to bring him in on loan. The loan fee and wage contribution represented great value for money. He did play quite a lot of games. 49 games. Average rating 7.08. I hope. Hope the director of football decides to try and sign him on a full-time contract. Uh, Christopher Dillo came in and he was an A plus mainly due to the transfer fee and the players wages representing great value for money 42 appearances he was a very good signing to be fair um don't know why he isn't marked as our best signing although Clemens potentially could be uh Lasana Diaco um lower wage than would have been expected to pay for someone of his ability but only a B minus I suppose he had an average season. Uh, Matt Dolan, very expensive. Uh, then again, they're happy with the, the fact his wages were quite low. Josh Dacres Cogley, disappointed with him. Um, a 6.61, wasn't great. And Matung, uh, Makatungu, that was a complete flop. He was god-awful. The loan fee, far too high for a player of his ability. I think so. Uh, transfers out. Callan A. Smith, yeah, content with the deal, I'm a little disappointed. Then Garner, I thought we could have got more money for the player. I think we could have as well, had I been in charge of it. But what are you going to do? And Jamie Jones, they thought we could have gotten uh, more money from him. But it was good to remove his salary from the club's wage bill, which was potentially the best thing that we could have done. Uh, 12 appearances from him. Came off the bench once. Interesting. Uh, played a 6.57. He wasn't great. And loans out. Jolly. Happy with the loan fee we received. Same with Obi. Weber. Happy to receive a loan fee. And reduce the wage bill. Doesn't get paid that much. Play, played for Eastley. Got a couple of games for us. And Joe Piggott. Didn't really have much for a season at Gateshead. Played once for us. Yeah. They wanted us to fight bravely against relegation. We did just ever so slightly more than that. 17th place in the league. Technically, we fought very bravely against it. Um, our lowest position was 21st, though. So, the Lattics, the Lattics season started badly, sinking to 21st by October, but they produced when it mattered and were able to avoid relegation. Wigan are very much an almost end of season team. So, when it gets to crunch time, we're pretty decent. 42% uh, average home attendance, top goal scorer, the League One, our League One top goal scorer, Will Keane with 13 goals. You see what I mean by we need a, a striker who's going to score some goals. Um, they're delighted that we avoided relegation. Um, FA Cup, third round, the board are pretty happy. Um, Carabao Cup, second round, again, board are pretty happy. Two defenders, top scorer in that cup, or that competition. Yeah, we didn't... Um, we didn't do an, or, yeah, we struggled. Um, and then in the Papa John's Trophy, Wilkin and Joshua Reggie. Joshua Reggie scored most of his goals in the Papa John Trophy. I think he scored five all season. Two of them came in that cup. Um, the board did not care whatsoever. The biggest win was a 5-0 victory over Crewe, which came towards the end of the season. Match to remember was a 4-1 win over Bristol Rovers, where Reggie scored. And Joe Garner scored one of his few goals. And goal of the season was Mary's 90th minute strike from centre midfield as he scores a free kick from the edge of the area. It was decent. It wasn't amazing. It was one of those games where pretty much everything we hit went into the back of the net. Um, the reputation has not changed. Obviously, the sponsorship hasn't changed because this is the first season, so there's nothing to compare it to. Um, we did make 234000 from merchandise sales. 
um, a, a tenth of that came from non-domestic and we sold just short of 4,000 shirts with Evans being the, the main one Solomon, Massey, Keane and Dillo being the other four in the top five team of the season lines up as a 4-4-2 um, pretty standard 4-4-2 Dillo getting in Tom James who went back to Hibs and did not play Oh, I should not have done that. Why did I do that? I pressed the button and I shouldn't have. Clemens gets in alongside Diaco at centre back. Pierce as our left back. Massey and Solomon Adabar as our wide men. Evans and McHugh in central midfield. Keane and Joseph as the strikers. I, yeah, the second striker. It was all Will Keane was like the number one striker, and then it was just someone else alongside him. Uh, the only one I would look at this and kind of go, eh? maybe Diaco. Till to play a lot of games before he left. Other than that, I don't think there's anyone in the team you could probably say, like you could really go, they didn't deserve it. Maybe Kyle Joseph, but mm. your hard work and effort paid off on an, the pitch and such a feat didn't go unrewarded at the end of her at the our end of season award ceremony. So the fans player of the season was Clemens. Young player of the season was Tom Pierce. Goal of the season was Mary in that game against Crew, I imagine. Yeah, it was actually. Yeah, that's, that's that's what I said. Uh, top goal scorer was Will Keane with 13 in the league. Uh, Solomon Arbor had six assists. Clemens had five player of the matches and the highest average rating at 7.1. No competition awards. Fair enough. Um, most goals in the match was Will Keane with two. Most Goals by a player in the league match. It was Will Keane with two. Uh, clean sheets. Dillo got 13. I didn't actually really see a 13. Assist, or clean sheets. I thought it was a lot less than that. Uh, Clemens got five man of the matches. Which was a new record. He also had the most yellow cards. At 12. Um, I think Mary had the only red card of the season for us. Fastest goal was Lee Evans. In one minute and 49 seconds. Youngest goal scorer. 16 years and 141 days. Rob Senior. Also, the youngest player, he was 116 years and 122 days, I think. Um, do I have to press for, no? Okay, so I have to wait for this to load up. That is fine. So we have a bunch of players being recommended to us who are up for sale um, after the at the end of the season. The board are pretty happy with us avoiding relegation. Does that mean we haven't made it into anything else? But Clemens makes it into favourite personnel. Hopefully that means the board. No. I was hoping the director of football might be like, hey, this guy did really well. Our expected XG was 57.6. Our actual goals were 53. So we underperformed. The XG points were 65.3. Or, yeah, 65.3. We actually got... 57 and we should have finished 13th and instead we finished 17th so that was disappointing club vision for next season they want us to play entertaining football which we did not do last season uh, work within the wage budget which we did they want us to get mid table i really hope the director of football is doing something this year because that's oh. um, and they want us to work towards repairing the club's financial damage which is large it's it's large. They want us to just continue being an established League One team, and I have to say I think that's probably what we can hope for. Eight hundred and fifty-five thousand in debt, so it's come down, but we've made a loss this month. Our committed spend is currently just shy of forty thousand, and we've no money for next season, which is what you want. Um, dressing room atmosphere is average, and it's decreased ever so slightly. The managerial support is moving up which is what you want. So we're going to discuss our plans with the players for next season. Playoffs? No. Um, top, we're finishing top half next season. Mid-table finished. They're all pleased. Exactly the kind of ambition. Exactly the sort of reaction I was looking for. Um, I'm delighted that you were able to share the same level of ambition. We can secure a mid-table finish for us. Um, I don't really have any... Once you return, once you all return from holidays, we can discuss promises for next season. I'll see you all when you get back. 
downcast. I'm not sure where we stand. I had expected some clear promises to be made. Thanks, everyone. I'll see you at the start of preseason. <laughs> Bye. I'm off to Marbella. Um, so they wanted me to make promises where normally when I make promises, they get annoyed. So our biggest weakness is balance. We lack aggression. We need to get Lee Catamol back. Uh, the group isn't great at crossing. Lacks determination and composure. We're not brave. Can concentrate. Isn't especially good at shooting from distance. Uh, well, that's, you know, something. Passing is often inconsistent and disappointing. So we're terrible passers. Can't take penalties. Not great at tackling. Vision's not great. So we need... Everyone has good spec savers. Uh, the anticipation's not great. Corner taking's pretty bad. We have no money. Mediocre squad compared to the rest of the league. Squad's marking's not great. Oh, it's, this is a lot, of, a lot of bad points. What have we got? What's good? Agility is quite good. Solomon Ottobor is the best of three good options to play on the right midfield. Very good. We can accelerate. Decent pace. Our left back is good. Will Keane is the best of six strikers up front. Dillo has good quality in goal. Ottobor is, yep. He's, Ottobor is our best left and right midfielder. We have a little bit of money to spend. Who missed most of the season? Tom Pierce. 26%. Kind of expected, to be fair. Four injuries only. Most injured player was Marcus Snell. Gavin Massey and Sam Finley, all with five. And the longest spell, Patrick Weber. Two months out with a slip disc. Do not remember that happened. Oh, that was when he was on loan with Eastley. Uh, the lads will be back on the 21st of June. And then that's just an analysis of what we did in the last game. So, nothing coming up as of yet. We do have, I think some of our staff's contracts are running out. Um, No. So, none of our... Coaching staff's contracts run out. Recruitment team. Contract. None of their contracts. Okay, so the director of football's obviously offered all new contracts. Yeah, the director of football's offered contracts to pretty much everybody. Um, One thing I did notice is we've medical staff here. We've two slots. But only one sports scientist. So I'm guessing. Yeah, we have a vacant physio slot, even though we don't. Or do we? We do. Says we have a physio, but we don't. Um, we also have a loan manager when we're not supposed to, which I don't. So we will be back in just a hot second to see how we're doing in the transfer window um, at the start of the next season. So don't go anywhere. Should be interesting. Hopefully, we sign some centre backs, a striker, a couple of midfielders, a right back, a goalkeeper. A few strikers, maybe. Did I mention centre backs? Centre, yeah. We need we need basically everybody. We need somewhere. We need somebody in every position, basically. Otherwise, we're screwed. And they want mid table. They, oh. right, we will be back in just a second, right, fellas? So the first day of the season is upon us, and that can mean but one thing. We're not playing any games today, um, because. As I said in the last, the last part of this episode, we're going to have a quick cheeky little look at the transfers that have happened so far. Um, as it is right now, we're still waiting on Omar Beckles to decide if he wants to join us or not. Could potentially cost us 65000 and 1.3k a week. Not terrible. The director of football finally doing something we actually need because we're short centre-backs. Um, but what has he brought in? What has he sold? So, Zach Dobby has left for Exeter which is interesting because I thought he was going to be a decent player um, he had the potential but we're not going to get to use him because he was sold to Exeter's under 18s and Patrick Weber one of our very few centre backs was loaned out to Torquay in the Van Ramen National so he's very much a Van Ramen National League level player he played 10 games for us last year to be fair most of them off the bench uh, but Torquay are paying a tidy bit of money to us so it's not the worst thing in the world. Um, Jude Arthurs is a central midfielder who is not very good. Came from Bromley. Previously of uh, Gillingham. And Deal, who I'd never even heard of. Dealtown. Southern Counties East Prem. 
Never heard of him. Um, he's in the under 23. He's not very good. He'd probably get a chance at some point. But hopefully that won't be necessary. Toby Phillips is another one that came in. He's a, a jack of all trades, I suppose you could say. Um, mostly a central midfielder. Again, e ex Chorley and Rochdale. Uh, played last season for Chorley in the Van Ramen North. Can't see him getting many games. Um, Rio Molyneux is wanted. Mm. He's actually wanted. He's not very good. <laughs> to be fair, he's not very good. I'm teaching him to be a left inside forward because he's he wants to be a winger. But he's got seven crossing. But he's got ten finishing. And he's right footed only. So I was like, eh. Inside forward. Maybe. He's got some potential. X Mansfield and Alfredton. Again, probably not going to get too many games. We'll skip over uh, Stansfield for a second. And we brought in Toby, or Tom Blackwell. We're getting his wanted by Oxford City. And Merthyr. He has some potential. He's got three star potential. It's, he's potentially got potential. Um, can't finish to save his life. But he, he's played for Canvey Island. So anybody who's a, who knows Canvey Island... They've had some good players in the past, like Julian Dix, used to play for West Ham. One of my favourite left backs when I was growing up, because I wanted to be a left back. Um, yeah, he's not really had an illustrious career, but now he's playing in League One for us. When I say playing, I mean, probably not going to get many games. But the one that surprised me the most, and I feel like was kind of unnecessary, but at the same time I did say we needed it. Jay Stansfield is a striker, and he comes straight in as... Probably our best striker in the, in the team. Um, quite good acceleration and agility. Not great at jumping, but he's five foot nine. So, but he's he's got high determination, which is quite nice, and a fairly determined personality. And he's played for Fulham in the Championship once, but still, uh, last season played quite a few friendly games. I got 17 goals, or non-competitive games, so under 23 games, I'm guessing. Uh, 17 goals is not terrible. Uh, it comes to us as, like I said, one of our best, the best striker for us. And he filled the role that we that we need. So this is the starting eleven as it stands right now. We have Dillo in goal. Uh, Diaco and Smith are going to be playing as our wing-backs because we have injuries. Uh, Obi and Dolan are going to be our centre-backs, because we don't have many centre-backs. Lee Evans and McHugh are going to continue as our probably forever central midfield partnership. Um, Evans did eventually sign a contract, like the day his contract was expiring. And then we have Massey and Solomon Ottobor as our wide men, behind Stansfield and Keane. Hoping that those two come together and do well would be ideal. Uh, Will Keane is now the weak link in the strike force, rather than being Probably the strongest player. Uh, Dakers Cogley is injured, returning in seven days. Failed his fitness test. And Tom Pierce is out with sprained knee ligaments from a 3-3 draw against Celtic. Because we played some very interesting friendlies um, in the lead-up to this. Still short of right-backs, which is insane. We have Dakers Cogley, who's probably going to be our starting right-back, unless something changes in the transfer window. Which, if we have a quick look, the... Transfer window is still open for another month. Alright, so we've plenty of time. Uh, season preview has us 13th. Is that media prediction is 24th originally? But now it's up to 13th, which is good. Hmm. Um, we did have a couple of players we offered for that didn't work out. Um, there was a centre back. Who we offered for, who went to Birmingham. We tried to sign a centre midfielder. Who instead of joining us permanently went to Wrexham on loan I think it was. Um, so yeah, it's been it's been a time. It's not not fun. We have a million, 1.5 million in the bank. <clears throat> Which, 1.5 million, I did not expect to have that much money. Oh, okay, They expect us to make huge losses. But we have 1.5 million in the bank currently. Thanks in part to the amount of friendly sex set up. Uh, lots of them made us lots of money. Played Man United, got a bit of money off that. Played Preston, got a little bit of money. Played Burnley, got a nice amount of money from that. Then Sunderland and Maidenhead were set up by my assistant. 
played Celtic, made a nice bit of money off that, and we gump Arsenal, which we we did quite well against Arsenal, to be fair. Um, then we drew with Chelsea, then played Coleraine, and then we had the Money League. Oh, the Money League, which we won. Blackburn, Bolton, and Boiled? Boiled, yeah. Um, made a tidy little bit of money off that. <laughs> the final friendly, Charlie Molly, or Jolly, who scored... I tell you, he scored more goals than that, but he's not going to be in the first team today, which, you know, sucks to be in. But for the tomorrow's episode, we're going to take on Bristol Rovers and crew. I'm not going to bother with the first round of the Carabao Cup because it's against Sheffield Wednesday. And Sheffield Wednesday are a championship side who are expected to finish. Where is Sheffield? 12th. So they expect to finish mid-table. Um, Sheffield United, West Ham and West Brom all expected to go straight back up. From the championship too, to be fair. You'd expect it. Declan Rice. Still at West Ham. That's interesting. I would have expected. Them to lose him. Um, Brentford expect to finish bottom of the, the Premier League. To be expected. Jason Steele actually. Another player my director of football trade to sign. Went to Tottenham. So. You know. We were up against it. Uh, he also said, tried to sign. Jesse Lingard. Juan Mata. I think my director of football is a bit of a lunatic because we could never afford those players. <laughs> like, ever. We were never going to get... When I came up and he said he'd offered to buy or tried to sign JC Lingard on a free on a free contract or on a free transfer, I was like, are you mad? Where did he end up going? Uh, Lingard ended up going to Hatafe. For just shy of 17k a week, which we wouldn't have been able to afford. And Juan Mata went to Montpellier for just just over 18k. We were never getting those players. I don't know why he offered for them. It was just madness. So yeah, um, that is everything that we've done to this point. Um, Kovar, just I spotted his name on the screen previous. Gone to LA Galaxy on loan. Interesting, I wouldn't mind... Wouldn't mind getting him in. He was a decent keeper last year for Swindon. Um, but yeah, that is where we're going to leave it. As I said, next episode is going to be Bristol Rovers and Crew. So if you have enjoyed looking at the sadness that I'm going to be facing for the rest of the season with my three centre backs, <laughs> please do leave a like because, as you can see, oh we, yeah, we've we know we've four because Diaco is a centre back as well, but Matt Dolan not really a centre back. He's mm, he's. Mm, Oh, and Diaco was unhappy because we wouldn't sell him to Wickham. Wickham came in with an offer. Uh, to be fair, it was a pretty decent offer. And the director of football said no. And now he's thrown up a, a little bit of anger. Uh, but none of the players hate me, which is all that matters. So, happy days. Um, like I said, if you enjoyed this episode, please do make sure to leave a like, comment and subscribe. Share with all of your friends. And I will see you in the next one. Bye!